Jaron Ennis versus David Avanesian is yet to happen this weekend, but Boots Ennis has again put forward his wish to face Terrence Bud Crawford in a future showdown. Before, you definitely want that Crawford fight. I want to show the world and prove, you know, prove that I, you know, show my skills and my yeah. ability, you know. Whatever he think he could do, I could do better, you know. Uh. Even Jaron's promoter, Eddie Hearn, is keen on making this mega fight as soon as possible. Eddie plans on making Ennis the undisputed champion at the 147 division and then make him move to 154 in hopes of facing Crawford. We've got to get him in the fights. We've got to get him undisputed at 47. He can move up. I want to see him fight Terence Crawford. You know, I mean, that's a fight that's been talked about and Terence will only take that fight if he's big enough. I back Jerron Boots Ennis against anybody. And what, what a joy to be guiding this man's career. Eddie also mentioned that the only person that could make this fight happen is Turkey Alalshik, who has also shown interest in this fight. Eddie stated, the only person that can deliver that fight is His Excellency, Turkey Alalshik. Crawford is going to want a huge amount of money for that fight because of the risk. I'll make sure Boots gets the right price as well. When I took Jaron to meet His Excellency in New York, he made it very clear that it was a fight that he was very interested in. But when Crawford was asked about a potential fight between him and Ennis, Crawford said that it's not a mega fight that he's looking looking for right now. Crawford stated, like I said, Jaron is in one place. I'm in another. I'm looking for mega fights right now and right now. That's not a mega fight. I'm looking to fight guys like Canelo. That's pretty much it. And a rematch with Spence. Crawford believes that he's at that part of his career where he can do whatever he wants considering that he's one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. Crawford insisted that a fight with Ennis would be a lose-lose situation for him as he won't get the credit for defeating him. A lot of people like boosters, boost that boosters, you know, uh, fighting boosters, lose boost situation. I win, they're gonna say, oh, well, he was young, he wasn't ready. He got the experience, so he got so much more than his crew that had never been tested before, you know, because we always seen him win a fashionate way, you know, to where we say, oh, man, he's old, he's good for that. He's never been in the ring with nobody to test him. Me fighting boots, not a mega fight. I'm looking for a big one. I'm taking anything away from boots. Where I am at in my career right now, all my eyes off to get to where I am. Not deserve it, whatever. Going into the history of this matchup, Crawford became the undisputed champion at the 147 division last year when he defeated Errol Spence Jr. In the aftermath of the Carford Spence fight, the IBF ordered Crawford to defend against Jaron Ennis, despite Crawford having an immediate rematch clause in his contract with Spence. Not submitting to the IBF mandatory demands, Ennis was named champion as the IBF doesn't accept rematch clauses as an exemption from mandatory obligations, giving them the right to strip Crawford of his title for technically refusing to take on Ennis. The rematch between Crawford and Spence hasn't seen the light of day, as Crawford recently moved up to the 154 division, where he will be facing Israel Madrimov for the world title. If the fight does happen between Boots Ennis and Bud, Ennis is hungry to prove that he's the best. During a recent interview, he said, Whatever Crawford thinks he can do, I can do better. I want to show the world and prove that I show my skills and my ability, he told Rivera when asked about the possibility of fighting Crawford. I feel like I haven't really gone into my bag yet. I feel like they haven't seen the best of me. Roy Jones Jr. expressed his thoughts of wanting to check Ennis's chin before getting into a mega fight with Crawford. He stated, We haven't seen Boots Ennis against a guy who's tested his chin. That's the only thing we we don't know about him yet. We don't know if he can take a real punch yet. However, Jones is confident that Ennis has the skills he needs to get the job done. He said that Ennis would be a difficult fight for Crawford because he has everything. As far as the skills go, he got everything. When a guy is as talented and has the skill level that Boots has, anything can happen. Crawford is considered one of the best even at this stage of his career, and many pros have praising words to say about the quality and skill that he possesses. Shakur Stevenson has sparred with Crawford before starting his professional career and says that he got the worst beating of his career career during that session. He stated, when I was, I want to say 17, I pull up on him. So I was like, yo, you going to give me some rounds? So I got in the ring and this dude got a beating me up. Like we only sparred two or three rounds. It was four minute rounds. Man, this dude beat me up so bad. I swear to God, that was the worst swooping I ever had as a fighter. Crawford's former opponent, Hank Lundy, is confident that Boots will be the one who finally beats Crawford. Hank believes that Father Time would eventually catch up to Terrence Crawford and predicts this fight in favor of Ennis by stoppage. <laughs> Boots is the one that beat Crawford, and he do it with ease. I'm, I'm being real. Like, Crawford is good as what he doing, but what's this? Father Tom. Father Tom. I got Boots, man. And I bet the house. Who won bet? This isn't a stoppage. 
I got stoppers. Greg Hackett is also a big fan of Jaron Ennis. He said that Boots is one of the biggest boxing stars in the world today, even comparing him to Gervonta Davis. Greg stated, I feel like we're looking at the new superstar of boxing and Tank's doing his thing. I ain't taking nothing away from Tank. Tank is doing his thing, but Boots has got just something with him, man. Boots has got some type of control factor with him. Like when Boots gets in the ring, he demands his respect and he gotta do what he do. When asked about a fight between Ennis and Crawford, Hackett believes that Crawford has moved on from the 147 division, and if a fight between him and Ennis doesn't happen, Hackett won't mind it. Hackett is just starstruck by Boots Ennis's brilliance and wants him to become a superstar and do his own thing for the upcoming future. But Boots gonna hold it down for the next, I'm gonna say the next 12 years. That means it's gonna be something. Coach Hassan Hamid L also thinks that Jaron Ennis is a sadistic fighter, as he has a lot of confidence and loves to fight. Hamid L then was also in awe of Ennis's optimistic defense. You have a kid like Jaron. He's sadistic in the gym. Mm. Now he's like, he love beating your ass. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, like, he, he's sadistic with it. And, 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 and he got great defense on top of it. Coming to Boots' fight on July 13th, he was originally scheduled to face his mandatory challenger, Cody Crowley, who had to pull out with an injury. Due to this, Ennis took on a different challenge with Avanesian. Despite the replacement, Eddie Hearn remains optimistic about the fight. He thanked Avanesian for stepping in the ring. Eddie stated, It's a tough fight for Boots, but we wanted a tough fight. Thank you to Avanesian for stepping up. He has the name value, and you know what you're going to get. A tough, come-forward guy who won't take a step backward. Hearn also praised Ennis, who will be fighting under the matchroom boxing banner for the first time in 2024. He stated, in my opinion, Avanesian is facing one of the pound-for-pound -pound top fighters in the sport. Hearn further expressed excitement and disappointment that Ennis has not yet had a big fight in his hometown. Philadelphia, known for its boxing history with figures like Joe Frazier and Bernard Hopkins, has a rich fight culture. Hearn said, I can't believe that it hasn't been done early. I mean, it's not rocket science. It's a natural thing to do. Philadelphia is a great fighting city. They're a knowledgeable crowd. They have a true world champion, a great fighter in Boots Ennis, and he's going to light up the city. When asked about fighting in his hometown, as a reigning world champion. Ennis expressed his excitement and eagerness to perform in front of his friends and family. I mean, the homecoming is, is everything. You know, uh, be able to walk out in front of my, you know, friends, family, and put on a beautiful show. It's gonna be a blessing, I can't wait, you know, it means a lot to me, you know. Known for his pressure style in the ring, Avanesian should pose somewhat of a threat, but his best days are also behind him. The Russian was badly knocked out by Terence Crawford when he fought for a welterweight title before. So, the goal for Boots should be to stop Avanesian well before the sixth round because fans will compare him unfavorably to Crawford if he can't do a better job of dispatching him. This question was asked by Dan Raphael to which Boots replied by saying that he doesn't care about this. Boots stated, Nah, I really don't care about that. Like I said, I'm excited to be back in the ring. That's my main thing, being back in the ring, putting on a show for my friends and family, throwing in a big statement with a big knockout. I'm going in to have fun and put on a show. I really don't care about what these other guys are doing. Ennis's father and trainer, Bozy Ennis, believes that Avanesian has a better resume than Cody Crowley. He thinks that Avanesian likes to put pressure, but it won't be a problem for Ennis. He stated, What I'll say about Ionesian is that he got a better resume than Cody Crowley. I mean, he for some top guys and beat some top guys. He likes to put pressure on you, but I don't think whatever he does, it's not going to be too difficult for us, because we adjusted every different style. Boots also believes that Avanesian is a bigger name than Cody and has fought better competition. Ennis said that he wants the bigger competition and will knock out Avanesian in front of his home crowd. He stated, Avanesian is is definitely a bigger name than Cody Crowley. He's fought better competition than Cody Crowley. I definitely think it's a better fight. That's what I want. He's going to bring the fight, and that's what the fans want. That's going to make for a beautiful show and a beautiful knockout. What makes me the best in the business is that I do everything in boxing today. Whatever you want, I got it. I can't wait. They're going to beat him up, break him down, and get a knockout. Avanesian is a veteran and a hard hitter who is mixed with some solid competition. Between 2018 and 2022, Avanesian scored six consecutive knockouts and developed something of a bogeyman reputation. Coming to this fight, Avanesian shared his thoughts about facing Ennis. Knowing that Boots is becoming a household name, Avanesian seems grateful for this big opportunity. He stated, I'd like to thank Matchroom and my manager Neil Marsh for this great opportunity. I do not need to ask twice to have a war with somebody, especially a fighter as highly rated as Jaron Ennis. Avanesian came on a short notice at three weeks to face Boots, which may cause a problem, but the veteran believes that it's not a problem as he and his team has prepared well for this fight. Why are you so confident you will beat Jaron with such short notice? 
Listen, uh, I think it's only this I need boot Jaron, I need boot him. He's, I no go here only work, understand? I go here for really fight. He is uh, a little bit uh, small time, if the uh, small camp is. This is boxing, mate. My manager Neil March called me, say it's possible this fight. I no think longer. I say it's okay. Why not? Better for Jake, I try. It's better than you not Jake, understand? Why me? Avanesian looks to be aware of Jaron's potential, but is also eager to win the title, as this could be his last opportunity to get the belt. He stated, Jaron Ennis is a world-class boxer, who I respect highly, and is a potential huge star. And on July 13th, we will find out if he is the real deal. I promise all fans I will give everything to win this world title. This is my last world title chance, and I have to take it. I do respect Ennis and his career, as he has been perfect, but he has what I want and need. When asked about facing Ennis in his hometown of Philadelphia, Avanesian said that he has faced some of the best and will do his best to silence the home crowd as he's the more experienced fighter. He stated, A ring's a ring. I've boxed Crawford, Kavalyauskas, Mosley, Peterson, Kerman Lejaraga, Josh Kelly. I'm not bothered. I have fought everyone in their backyard. A boxing ring is a boxing ring. It doesn't matter. I'm very experienced. Malatu Roman believes that Jaron Ennis is the best 147 pound for pound boxer in the world right now. He said that he can't even imagine anyone beating boots at 147. Uh, me personally, I, I I don't think any anybody anybody can mess with Roots, man. I, I think he's genuinely the best 147 pounder, pounder in the world right now, and I don't really see anybody beating him. Anybody that I've seen, any any of the top guys at 147, I don't really see anybody can compete with him. So I think I, I, no matter who he would have faced, no matter who they would have replaced that fighter with, I think no matter what, he would have just completely outboxed him. When asked to make a prediction for this fight, Malatu stated, middle round stoppage man, middle round stoppage. Roman said that Boots will outbox Avanesian on the fight night. I think he's Boots gonna completely devour him, just outbox him, and Boots' power is nothing to mess around with. If you get hit with one of those hard shots, you might go down, out of nowhere like flash knockdowns. Chris Algeri said that he likes Cody Crawley more, but Ennis was most likely to beat him if their fight happened in the first place. However, he feels the same about this fight, as he said that Ennis will also get his hands raised against Avanesian too. Yeah, I, I think he was gonna, I like Cody, Cody, but he was gonna beat Cody. Um, he, he's gonna beat Avanesian. Uh, it's more of this is gonna be the inaugural matchroom show for him, so I appreciate that. So they're making the fight happen. Anytime Ennis. Chris was further asked about what he expects from Ennis during the fight. He seemed confident that Jaron would surely win. He stated, I'm going to see him whoop that ass. I think that's what he's supposed to do with a guy like that. So I think Jaron's a special, special talent. So he's going to go out there and be himself. Jaron boots. Ennis will defend the IBF welterweight title against David Avanesian on Saturday, July 13th, with Avanesian stepping in on short notice to replace original opponent Cody Crowley. Crowley was recently pulled from the bout after failing an eye exam. Timothy Bradley, ESPN analyst, said, I think Ennis wins this fight. His speed and power are just too much for Avanesian, but it won't be easy. Avanesian will test him like never before. Ennis, who has a record of 31 wins with 28 knockouts, is widely regarded as a rising talent in the boxing world. This upcoming match marks the 26-year-old's debut with Matchroom after switching over from the premier boxing champions camp. His journey to claiming the IBF title this year assist in him being promoted to full champion status following Terence Bud Crawford's decision to pursue a weight class change instead of facing him in the ring. Process like that. Yeah, it was, you know, it was a shame you never want a withdrawal, but, you know, we're very fortunate that Avanesian was ready, training, and, you know, I mean, Cody's a good fighter. Avanesian is, I think it's a tougher fight. Obviously, he has greater credentials than Cody Crawley, but, you know, Crawley was undefeated. But the thing is with Avanesian, he's very strong, very game. You saw when he fought Crawford, like, he doesn't take any backward steps. And it's a real fight. You know, we've got a huge crowd in Philadelphia and I was very pleased with the replacement. Lou DeBella, senior boxing promoter, stated, Ennis is the future of the welterweight division. This fight against Avanesian is exactly what he needs to showcase his talent on a bigger stage. Avanesian's no easy opponent and a win here would be a statement. Furthermore, Avanesian, a 35-year fighter with a record of 30 wins, four losses, and one draw, is well known in the boxing division. From Russia, but now residing in the United Kingdom, he has faced defeats against Lamont Peterson, Egidigis, Mean Machine, Kavaliauskas, and the skilled Crawford throughout his career. Additionally, he had a run at the level from 2019 to 2022, leading to his opportunity to challenge Crawford in late 2022. Resume than Cody, Cody Crawford. You know what I mean? He fought some, you know, some top guys, you know what I mean? Yeah. And beat some top guys, you know what I mean? So, uh, 
That's, that's all I can say. Look, you know what you say? You no, know, I'm saying, what does he possess that can make this difficult? What he possess? Yeah. Oh, he put, he like to put pressure on you. Like to put pressure on you, but um, I don't think what whatever he do is not gonna be too difficult for us because we we adjust to every different style. You know what I mean? Doesn't make no difference. And remember this, we fight inside too. Though. So he coming at us, we, a lot of times we ain't got to go to him. According to Carl Greaves, David Avanesian's trainer, David is in great shape and ready for this fight. We've studied Ennis and have a game plan to neutralize his strengths. David's experience and toughness will be key factors. Yeah, I, I mean, there's no need, there's no need to, uh, to look at the tapes because like I told you, just like I told you about um, when he fought, uh, what's, your, what's his name? Um, Kareem Chikaza? Yeah, yeah, when he fought him, I said, yo, now he was beating everybody. You know what I mean? Walking to him, you walk him down. And I told you, he ain't gonna fight Boots. He's still. And, yeah. and I and watched him fight the other day. He's still walking with Boots. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, but what did he do with Boots? Boots. He used the whole ring. But you was smart, you know what I mean? You know? And Boots thought he was gonna fight. You know what I mean? Boots tried to walk him down. Boots tried to cut the ring off, but Boots tried to walk him down, make him fight. He wouldn't fight. I guess Boots did. Crawford did about as expected, stopping Avanesian in the sixth round. Avanesian most recently fought in December, a nothing tune-up fight on a small show in Birmingham, England, where he fought as a middleweight. Mentioning David Avanesian's last fight, he said, Crawford is a good fighter. I knew nothing before. When I went to start the fight for the European title, I said to my coach, listen, he has gloves. Boxing should be clean. I want to do cleaning sports. This is a bad thing. Moreover, Avanesian isn't all that credible a threat to Ennis on paper, but he's a credible fighter, and options at welterweight are limited these days, even without trying to find someone on about five weeks' notice. A new opponent will be taking on the IBF welterweight champion. IBF welterweight champion Jaron Ennis makes a title defense against David Avanesian this Saturday. He had originally been due to take on Cody Crowley, but the Canadian was forced to withdraw from the fight because of an eye injury. Pauli Malignaghi senior analyst said, Ennis is one of the most exciting prospects in boxing right now. His skill set is incredible, but Avanesian is a tough nut to crack. This fight is going to be a real measuring stick for Ennis. For Avanesian, this is his second attempt at a world title after being beaten by Terence Crawford when the pair faced off for the WBO welterweight title in 2022. Andre Ward, former champion and boxing analyst, said, Ennis is a special talent. He's got all the tools to become a world champion. This fight is a step towards proving he belongs among the elite in the welterweight division. The rest of the card looks the same now as it did when the undercard was announced just over a week ago. So what are your thoughts about Boots facing Crawford in the future? What do you make of his fight against Avanesian? Do let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of our other videos on the screen right now.